Brady and Neil thought it might be fun to try and add a piece of metallic lithium to 7up. The reason for this is that long ago 7up used to contain lithium salts, so they thought it'd be a bit of a joke. They bought a bottle of 7up, this is not product placement, and they poured some into a beaker and dropped in a piece of lithium. Of course it bubbled, partly the CO2 coming out of the fizzy drink, partly the hydrogen from the reaction. But what was surprising is that the solution started to go pale green and then it went a reddish brown colour and by the time I went into the lab it looked like beer. The obvious first stage is lithium metal reacts with water to form lithium hydroxide which is an alkali. That alkali might react further with the other components of 7up and if you read about it it contains sugar, natural lemon and lime flavour, whatever that is, and it also contains no caffeine, so there's no caffeine chemistry here. The first question is how would the acidity or alkalinity of the solution change? So we measured the pH of fresh 7up, which turned out to be slightly acidic, as you might expect if you dissolve carbon dioxide into water. And we measured the acidity of the 7up plus lithium. And again, as expected, it was pretty alkaline. So a possible explanation for the colour is that it was produced by the alkaline conditions and the alkali was causing a reaction of the other components of the 7up. Lithium salts are completely colourless. They're all white just like table salt. So the question is, why is it going coloured and brown? I suggested an experiment. If it was the alkali, we should get a similar effect if we put sodium hydroxide, which is a strong alkali, into some 7up. To begin with, nothing happened. Neil and Brady got quite excited. The professor's wrong, you see one up for them. But then as we watched the pellets of sodium hydroxide started developing a red colour almost as if they were bleeding. It was really rather beautiful and the colour began to develop. It was reacting slowly, much more slowly than the reaction that we saw with lithium. We noticed that the lithium hydroxide one, the one that we put lithium metal, the solution was quite hot and Neil dipped a thermocouple into the sodium hydroxide plus 7up and found that the surface was nearly at room temperature, but down where the colour was developing, it was quite warm, nearly 50 degrees. You might say, why wasn't it convecting? Well, of course, the concentrated solution of sodium hydroxide is very dense, so you get less convection that you would normally in water. We added some more sodium hydroxide and the colour developed. And so the reason why temperature is important is because most reactions of organic compounds, like the sugars in the 7up, double their rate for each 10 degrees centigrade that you go up. So if you go from room temperature 20 to 30 to 40 to 50, the rate will go up about eight times, doubling each time. So that would explain the difference. By this time, the lithium beaker was looking pretty dark and you couldn't really tell what colour it was. So I suggested that we dilute it a bit into water. So we got a beaker of water, not 7up, just pure water, and added a little bit of the solution and it looked a sort of yellowy-brown colour. Suddenly I thought perhaps 
whatever coloured compound we've made might be an indicator. You know that changes colour if you go from acid to alkali. So Neil had some concentrated sulfuric acid, which is a bit fierce. So he diluted that and we poured in the sulfuric acid. And much to my pleasure, it went completely colourless. So whatever we made changed colour depending on the pH, depending on the acidity. But then I wondered what would happen if we added more alkali. And when we added more alkali, it changed back to a colour. Now, of course, there are two explanations. The first one is we may have created an indicator out of 7-Up. The other explanation is that whatever was reacting in the 7-Up, there was still some in the water and that reacted with the alkali again. So you can't be absolutely sure what happened in the final stage, but it seemed to behave like an indicator. When we put in more alkali, it could be that that compound changed back, or it could be that there was still sugar in the solution and we just made more of the starting compound. And you can't really tell the difference without more careful experiments. It looked like an artwork. And I persuaded Brady and Neil that we should watch it melting.